Yeah, I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar and I want to congratulate you on taking this step towards reaping the benefits of skills management in your organization. The fact that you're attending a webinar like this and thinking about skills in this way, it really places you among the top third of managers that are optimizing and enhancing their workforces and wider businesses. So it's my hope today that I can provide you with some ideas and information that might help you on your journey. So we have a couple of slides to show, and then um, I'll do a demonstration of some of skills base, and then we'll take some questions after that. Okay, thank you, Nick. Next slide. So why become skills based? Well, there's a few key reasons why our customers um, take a skills based approach. One is to be able to move faster, to be able to make decisions quickly. And in today's competitive environment, this gives a, a very important edge over the competition. But not only making fast decisions, we want to be able to make better decisions as well by having the right information at the right time to make um, these, these decisions which are highly impacting on the business. And generally becoming more effective by having the right inter interventions in the right situations. And sometimes our customers come up with new and novel ways that the skills information that they've they've taken from the workforce can be used in in to define um, opportunities for the business that um, we sometimes have never heard of. What does a skills based team look like? So, the attributes of a skills based business or team. There's a skills taxonomy at the centre that drives the 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 data. There's a skills assessment. There's skills reporting and visualizations, which I'll demonstrate in the software. And there's outcomes and insights that can be taken from it. But, more, but most importantly, skills management is at the center and it drives value to all of the other downstream areas of opportunity in the organization. And one of those in particular, I'd like to look into a bit further, which is training and development. Thank you, Nick. So organizations that are using this information to drive benefits to training and development, they're able to target uh, content to skills gaps. So when you measure skills gaps and you can identify where the gaps are in your workforce, you can target training and, and other kinds of interventions to those gaps. And so you get a more efficient spend on that training and you get sort of a laser targeted training to, to skill gaps in the organization. It also helps measure the effectiveness of the training itself and of course, by doing all of that, ultimately optimizing investment. And so um, uh, Vodafone, for example, were able to reduce training time for new hires uh, to get productive by half from six months to three months. Another example is in the resource management space. When you have this kind of information available, you, it's easy to find the right people with the right skills for the right job. And um, I'll show you uh, a tool within SkillsBase that helps you do that very quickly. And uh, the, the roll-on effects of that can be increased satisfaction, um, both in, in, in the customer space, as um, Lucian had found, and also in the, the, in the employee space by focusing on areas of desire of employees um, and allocating resources, factoring in that desire level. So I'll show you how we track interest via uh, desire in skills base um, shortly. Okay, so let's do it. Let's have a look at the skills base tool. Okay, can we see that, Nick? Yes, we can. All right. So our customers generally have a need to track hundreds or thousands of granular, sometimes highly technical skills across hundreds or thousands of people. And these companies are really using skills insights to power their businesses. When you track the skills of the workforce at a granular level and you use that information to make decisions, you can unlock a world of opportunities. The customers generally start off solving one problem with skill insights and they quickly expand to solving multiple, getting more and more value from the, from the data. And we call these companies skills-based organizations. When you're tracking skills at a, at a granular level, you really need information at your fingertips. And for that reason, we have these dashboards, these real-time dashboards, and SkillsBase is really, the product is centered around these dashboards. It gives you a quick summary overall of, of a particular entity, in this case, a person. 
We can see skill levels and interest levels at a glance. We can see top skill top skills in order of skill level. These are the top skill categories that this person holds. These are the top interests in order of interest level. These are people with similar skills in the organization. And these are potential development areas where there's a high level of interest and a lower level of skill. Now, this person is a member of the software team. So I can click that link for the software team and I get the software team dashboard. There's 12 people in this team. Here's the overall statistics. These are the top skill categories and all the familiar charts and gadgets. These are the most skilled people in order of skill level, most interested. And these are the top skills in this team in order of skill level, top interest, top qualifications, etc. This person also has a role. They're a senior developer. If I click the senior developer link, I get the senior developer role dashboard. There's six people with this role in the organization. I can see at a glance the, the key metrics. Top Again, all the familiar charts and, and lists, top skill categories, most skilled people holding this role, top skills of people holding this role. So this ability to slice and dice information in real time, that's one of the, the key things that powers the ability to make fast and accurate decisions uh, via these real-time dashboards. And we have a dashboard for every entity in the system, including locations, qualifications, skills, roles, people. Um, it's, it's all there. So let's have a look more deeply into um, a particular individual's uh, dashboard. We have the skills tab, which goes, which has the, the underlying information that's driving this. And at, at, at its core, there's, there's two things really. There's a self-assessment where the employee is assessing themselves and a supervisor assessment to back that up. And we take those two and we, we, we take an average of the two and that becomes the, the default rating that's used across all these dashboards and reports. So why, why use those, those two methods, the self and supervisor assessment? Well, it comes down to the methodology. And this is our methodology that's published on our website. Firstly, it's sort of illustrating the, the key metrics that we track here ability via skill level, desire via interest level, knowledge via qualifications. Now, the, the knowledge part is, is an objective measure. It's quite easy to measure. You've got it or you haven't got it in terms of the qualification. And ability to desire, that's a little bit harder. It, it's just, that's, that requires a different method to, to, to measure. So you can use a, a, a subjective method to measure those. But um, let me scroll to the bottom here and, and show if you imagine a scale and on one side of the scale is a completely subjective way of measuring um, skill or interest, uh, it's probably uh, subject to bias. It's probably going to be very inaccurate. And on the other end of the scale, if you have a, a very a completely objective approach, people are taking exams and it's sort of telling you the skill level it can be very expensive. It can take a lot of time to implement and, um, and, uh, it can, yeah, it can really slow you down. And so what we found is a, is a balance between those two, we call it structured subjective. And so it takes advantage of a subjective approach. So it's very easy to use and quick and you can roll it out and get, um, get success uh, in, a, in a good time frame. but it's got structure around it to ensure that it's accurate and you're getting, you're getting accurate results and you can rely on the information. And key to that is a self-assessment backed up by a supervisor assessment. We also have a, a defined rating criteria, a fixed numeric rating scheme. We're grouping skills by job function, uh, having a fixed structured list of skills. So the combination of these gives you a powerful methodology that works. It gives you accurate results and it's easy to implement. And at the end of the day, you end up with this um, useful information that uh, you can get at your fingertips quickly. So I want to demonstrate a tool that is... Um, key to the resource allocation part. This is the people finder where I can set up a criteria where I'm looking for people skilled in this skill, at least at that level, but I also need them to be skilled at in this skill, at least at an intermediate level, but I'm only interested in engineers and I need them to be located in a particular office. So this tool will scan across the entire organization and it will find here some uh, six exact matches to my criteria. So these will be prime candidates for that task. And then also some close matches. So this person uh, was in the wrong location. This person didn't have the right skill level in this skill. 
So this is a key tool used by our customers for that resource allocation problem to find skilled people across the organization, but it's not limited to that use case. For example, a junior staff member can find more experienced staff members to coach and, and help them using this tool. This, yes, and you can export it to CSV. You can uh, add criteria based on qualifications and um, teams, roles, custom fields. Uh, you can do it based on interest. You can save these reports and rerun them. So I really use a report for um, that range of use cases. Another really uh, commonly used report by our customers is the heat matrix report. We can run it for skill level across a team. I'll do it for the software team here we have in our system. And what it does is it plots all the members of the team uh, across this axis and all the skills that they have across this axis and it's using colors to represent skill level so we in this case in this system we're rating skills on a scale of one to five so one is red and green is five five is green and we can quickly see uh, areas of strength and weakness across a team. And you can run this report for a team, a role, a location. You can run it for the whole organization. You can put the whole organization on one of these matrices. So you can quickly see a heat map uh, across, across your entire workforce. And so it does give good insight into strengths and, and weaknesses. But what, what we ideally want is to factor individuals roles into the picture as well because these people will all have different roles some of them might be more senior than others and so let me introduce into the mix the, the setting of targets so in skills base we have a set of roles and uh, for example i have a developer role and the developer role we assign a number of skills to the role so i've got a number of skills in the organization but only these software and digital skills will apply to the developer role so once I have that, that mapping of skills to the role set up, I can set targets for the skills in this role. And here's a chart that demonstrates the targets. I've set a target of two for this skill for people holding the developer role. And on average, it, people, uh, people in the, holding the developer role are 3.33 is their average skill level. So here the target is two. On average, people are 3.4, skill level 3.4. Here, yep, yeah, exceeding the target, exceeding the target. And then here is a gap. So the target was a five that was set for the developer role. On average, developers have a skill level of, of 2.9. So there's a gap here. And we measure that gap, express it as a percentage. So where we meet or exceed the target, we express it as 100%. We say 100% competent in this skill. Where there is a gap, we express it as a percentage. In this case, 58% competent in this skill. On average, developers are 58% competent. And then we roll up all those competency levels to the top level, and we can say, on average, developers are 96% competent in their role, i.e. 96% towards meeting the targets that we set for the role. And that's how competency level factors into things. So you end up with these three key metrics, how skilled, how interested, how competent. And with that information, we can run a different kind of heat matrix report based on the competency level matrix. We'll do it metric. We'll do it for the software team again. Same team, same people. Very different looking chart. There's a lot more green here now because as it turns out, these people didn't need to be level five in every skill for their role. They only needed to meet the targets set for their role. And on balance, they, they are doing that. They're meeting or exceeding their targets. And what you're left with then are the real gaps. This person here is only one third of the way towards meeting the target set for this skill for their role. And if you were to, to then target training or into other interventions to these gaps, that would be really laser targeting those interventions. And that's how you get that efficient spend on, on training by identifying these real key gaps, targeting the interventions to those. And you don't even have to run these reports and manually find these gaps if you have this, the skills-based training module. You just bring in all of your training courses from wherever those sources may be. You might have an internal LMS. You might have subscriptions to uh, various uh, services that offer training. You just, wherever it comes from, you just bring it into skills-based, the, the name and the link to it. 
and then you map this the training to skills and skill levels in skills base so i'm saying here this course helps people achieve a level two in this skill and once skills base knows that mapping it will start recommending training to people for these gaps it'll do it for you so i'll go to um, a person let's see the competency level 96 percent. so there's some gaps so i expect to see some training and here's the training that's been recommended by the system and the person can come to their dashboard view their training and they'll have a button to take action and it'll take them out to your system they'll complete the training and when they come back they can mark it as completed and so that's sort of a somewhat autom automated way of um, bringing in training interventions to fill specific skill gaps another way we can use that um, the competency level and the targets that we set for the role is via this career mobility insights tab so this tab will show you um, will compare a person to all the roles in the system that have targets and in this case the person is 96 percent um, competent in their developer role but as it turns out they're 95 percent competent in the senior development developer role so they're they're very close to meeting the requirements of the senior developer role there's a couple of gaps here and where there are a couple of gaps the system is recommending the training so that they can consider that training as a way of uh, progressing in in their career 52 percent of the way towards meeting the targets for the general manager role there's a few more gaps here they haven't got any of these skills so that's just another way that um, you can utilize that information and and uh, to feed downstream activities in your organization and and add benefit to them uh, in this case career mobility and this tool can also be used for other other purposes as well so I think um, with that, um, that's that's probably the extent of uh, what I'd like to to demonstrate. I've demonstrated the key uh, aspects of the system, the dashboards, the methodology driving it, the uh, people finder, the, the reports, and how they can support those downstream um, areas of opportunity. And uh, I will uh, hand back to to Nick, and we'll we'll take some questions. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Stephen. And hopefully everyone on the call today got some uh, good information and insights from uh, from the demo today. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to, to send them across and um, we'll get to to answering them um, today. Um, one one question that's come through, uh, someone's asking uh, about uh, HR system integration saying that they're currently using Workday and does Skillsbase have any any integration with Workday? Yes, we do have uh, a specific integration built for Workday. So it, many of our customers want to do uh, uh, this type of integration, a HR integration, and it's mainly for the syncing of personnel records. So that's a, that's a very understandable use case whereby you want to reduce the amount of administration in the system so that's a common commonly done integration and we have though we have um various tools to 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 facilitate that we have a batch file integration which um, um is very easy to configure in workday in via the user interface that can run on a daily basis uh, we also have a skills base also has a, a comprehensive rest api for more complex real-time integrations so the integ integratability of, of the system is, is really important because um, obviously you're using this information to for 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 um to drive downstream benefits in the organization so integrating it with other data is 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 important and for that reason we have um several ways to 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 get the information out of skills base um worked at the batch file integration for syncing api uh rest api for real-time integrations and we also have a very uh significant suite of um, exports that you can get from from skills base in the form of csv okay awesome um another question that's come through um how do we as a company transform our job descriptions into skills is that something that um, skills base can help us or 
help this uh, company with? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. It, it it's it it really is sort of um, making the leap from roles to, to role based to skills based. There, there's there's absolutely benefits in in doing that because when you I, I articulated at the start the benefits of of measuring skills at a granular level and what you get to. So yeah, the question is how 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 to do it, and we have um, some we have libraries of skills internally that we can we can help help you with and they're generally grouped by um, specialization and so if you have a role um, typically it's it, it, a role is a specialization and so they they generally align to the specializations that we have and this and the libraries that we use of skills they're they're industry standard uh, libraries and so these are available um, there's, there's several available and uh, it's a good starting point um, I don't know whether it's it's a good end point but it's a good starting point because one of the key things in order to get the full value from this, it's important to tailor the skills to the needs of the organization. If you use a generic um, library only and you just sort of plug it in, you're probably gonna get somewhat generic results because it's not tailored to your organization. So that tailoring part is important. And um, if, you, if you take that extra step, leverage a standardized library that we can provide align it to your roles, but take the extra step of tailoring to the needs of your organization, you're going to get a much more uh, contextually relevant result. And um, it's more conducive to success. But the thing is, also, I should say, you don't have to get this right up from the start, you can evolve this over time. And in fact, we would encourage you to involve it, evolve it over time. And especially due to the needs of, of skills changing in the organization and the industry. This is an evolving process. We've set up a system not only to help you get started quickly and, and get accurate results, but most importantly, to sustain it. Sustaining it so you can get sustaining returns. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, another question came through around a generic skills database. So hopefully, um, Dorothy, the uh, that answered your, your question as well around sort of the the industry, um, yeah, the industry skills libraries that we use. Um, awesome. Uh, the other one, uh, another question that's come up uh, is around sort of privacy and data security, especially with um, between employees uh, being able to see other sort of data sources. And they were asking, can employees see information on other employees? Yeah, so that is up to you. Um, the system is, one thing I didn't demonstrate in the system is its configurability. And one of the main areas of configurability is the permissions. So you have a lot of control over what people can see and do in the system. So it's really up to you what employees can see. And uh, I know that some organizations are bound by um, laws such as GDPR and um, it's particularly tight in Germany with, with that kind of a thing. But um, the general rule, as we put it, is the more access that you can give to employees, the better, because the more use that they can personally get from the system, the more buy-in that they will have into the process. So if they're just filling out an assessment and then... Um, you know, they can see their own profile and nothing else. It, it, it's, it becomes sort of a task for them. But if they can, if they fill out the assessment and then they can reap the benefits themselves by searching for skilled people, uh, for example, when they need help, a junior staff member, then there's more buy-in to the process and it's more, it's more conducive to success of the overall process for your organization. Awesome. Thanks for that. And I'll ask one more, one more question. Um, how long does it typically take to get started with skills beds? Mm, yeah, well, it's, it's it really varies, and so, so the platform and so when you get started with skills base, we generally assign you an onboarding coordinator, and they assist you through the onboarding stage. Now they can move as fast as as you want, and some organisations, I mean, literally get get up and running on the first day. They'll put they know exactly what skills they want to track. They know what people they want to import. They know what roles and teams they have. It's pretty easy to set that stuff up. And, and, and we can help you with imports as well of importing that information. And you can get something going in the first day. I mean, that's that's um it sounds like an extreme case, but but commonly that that occurs in maybe in smaller pilot groups. But um 
for the larger rollouts where there's a bit more planning and, and you need to work on the, on, on the skills library, for example, uh, I think realistically uh, a few weeks is, is, is what it takes. And in, in the worst case, it might take uh, a, a month or two or more for the largest um, um, organizations that are in, in the sort of the, the lower maturity states. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for, for answering those, Stephen. And um, yeah, almost 6.30 on the, the dot. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. And yeah, hopefully uh, you found, uh, well, got some insights out of the demonstration that Stephen put together. And if you have any more questions as they come through, feel free to, to reach out and we'll, we'll get back to you. Thanks all so for thanks taking again. the time. Thank you. And uh, I wish you well on this journey. And of course, we're here to help. Um, we've been in this business for, for a while now. And so we've got, uh, we're, we're, we're very experienced with helping businesses like yours and um, we look forward to assisting. Awesome. Thank you.